there and welcome to my home classroom. My name is Ms. Bill and I'm happy to, to be back for a third day teaching another Making Meaning lesson. I teach at Arbor Heights in West Seattle. I teach fifth grade, which I think is my favorite grade to teach. I've taught a lot of different grades, but I love fifth graders. I love to read. Uh, two of my favorite genres are historical fiction and mysteries. And I also live here in West Seattle with a cat and her name is Tippy. Welcome, I'm glad you're here. For today's lesson, you'll need a few things. You'll need an IDR book for that portion of the lesson. You'll need your student response book if you have it. If not, no worries. And you need a turn and talk partner. Remember, a turn and talk partner is someone that perhaps you're watching the video with, it could be a pet, it could be a stuffed animal, it could be just reflecting in your own head. In today's lesson, we're going to reread a science fiction story that we read yesterday. So if you weren't with us for yesterday's lesson, no worries, you're gonna hear the story again. You're gonna be forming some opinions about the story, thinking about whether you like it or dislike it, or it's so-so. And then lastly, you're going to be learning to write a review. Earlier this week, we read two reviews of a couple of stories. One of those stories was Mrs. Buell, and another story was a picture book of Jesse Owens. And we learned that a review is a piece of writing that contains a summary of the story, the bigger important parts, but it also gives an opinion. And it's not just for books, it could be um, for a movie, a work of art, a performance, and so on. Reviews can be really helpful because they might influence someone to buy a book or to go see a movie, or they may influence someone to not buy a book or not go see a movie if the review is poor. So just to recap, a review has two parts to it. It has the summary of the bigger important parts of the story, and it also gives the reviewer's opinion. If you have your student response book, you can turn to page 86 and follow along as I read the story out loud. Our story, once again, is called Zoo by Edward D. Hotch. And for those of you that heard it yesterday, you remember that it's a science fiction story. We learned that science fiction stories often take place in the future or other worlds or have aliens, spaceships, that sort of thing. So let's get ready to listen to Zoo by Edward D. Hotch. As I'm rereading the story Zoo, I want you to think about a couple of questions. First of all, think about if you would recommend the story to someone and why or why not. And for those of you that are hearing the story for the second time, think about this question. Did your opinion of the story change during the second reading? Why or why not do you think that is? Zoo by Edward D. Hotch. The children were always good during the month of August, especially when it began to get near the 23rd. It was on this day that Professor Hugo's Interplanetary Zoo settled down for its annual six-hour visit to the Chicago area. Before daybreak, crowds would form, long lines of children and adults both, each one clutching his or her dollar and waiting with wonderment to see what race of strange creatures the professor had brought this year. In the past, they had sometimes been treated to three-legged creatures from Venus, or tall, thin men from Mars, or even snake-like horrors from somewhere more distant. This year, as the great round ship settled slowly to Earth in the huge Tri-City parking area just outside of Chicago, they watched with awe as the sides slowly slid up to reveal the familiar barred cages. In them were some wild breed of nightmare, small horse-like animals that moved with quick jerking motions and constantly chattered in a high-pitched tongue 
High pitched is like a high squeaky voice. The citizens of Earth clustered around as Professor Hugo's crew quickly collected the waiting dollars and soon the good professor himself made an appearance. Wearing his many colored rainbow cape and top hat. Peoples of Earth, he called into his microphone. The crowd's noise died down as he continued. Peoples of Earth, this year you shall see a real treat for your single dollar. The little known horse spider people of Khan brought to you across a million miles of space at great expense. Gather around, study them, listen to them, tell your friends about them. But hurry, my ship can remain here only six hours. And the, as the crowd slowly filed by, at once horrified and fascinated by the strange creatures that looked like horses, but ran up the walls of their cages like spiders. This is certainly worth one dollar, a man remarked, hurrying away. I'm going home to get the wife. All day long it went like that, until 10,000 people had filed by the barred cages set into the side of the spaceship. Then, as the six hour limit ran out, Professor Hugo once more took microphone in hand. We must go now, but we will return next year on this date. And if you enjoyed our zoo this year, phone your friends in other cities about it. We will land in New York tomorrow and next week onto London, Paris, Rome, Hong Kong, and Tokyo. Then on to other worlds. He waved farewell to them. And as the ship rose from the ground, the Earth peoples agreed that this had been the very best zoo yet. Some two months and three planets later, the silver ship of Professor Hugo settled at last onto the familiar jagged rocks of Khan. And the queer spider-like creatures filed quickly out of their cages. Professor Hugo was there to say a few parting words, and then they scurried away in a hundred different directions, seeking their homes amongst the rocks. In one, the she creature, the female creature, was happy to see the return of her mate and offspring. She babbled a greeting in a strange tongue and hurried to embrace them, to hold them. It was a long time you were gone. Was it good? And the he creature, the male creature nodded. The little one enjoyed it especially. We visited eight worlds and saw many things. The little one ran up the wall of the cave. On the place called Earth, it was the best. The creatures there wear garments, garments over their skin and they walk on two legs. But isn't it dangerous? asked the she creature. No, her mate answered. There are bars to protect us from them. We remain right in the ship. Next time you must come with us. It is well worth the 19 comics it costs. And the little one nodded. It was the very best zoo ever. Next, I'm going to read you a summary of the story Zoo. And in this summary, the author doesn't give away the ending, which is often typical of reviews. So please follow along as I read out loud. This science fiction story by Edward D. Hotch about a zoo of the future has a surprising ending. The story begins when a spaceship lands in Chicago. Inside is Professor Hugo's interplanetary zoo. Each year, the professor brings creatures from faraway planets to Earth for people to see. Inside the barred cages this year are the horse spider people of Khan.
strange and frightening horse-like animals that climb their cage walls like spiders. Thousands of horrified and fascinated earthlings file by to see the creatures. But when Professor Hugo returns the creatures to their own planet, you discover that the horse spider people had some thoughts of their own about earthlings. So let's go back over what a review includes. It includes the author's opinion of the story, and the author also gives evidence from the text to support those opinions. So I'm gonna model writing a review of Zoo to add to our summary. All right, I'm just gonna use some old fashioned chart paper to write um, my paragraph for the review of Zoo. And um, I'm thinking, as I told you earlier, that I really enjoyed the story. And I really liked it because um, the zoo of the future seemed really real, re real to me. So I think I'm gonna write, I recommend, this story because the author creates a world of the future that seems very real. All right, um, I also liked the way the author described the horse spider people. I could really visualize them running up the cage walls and squeaking in their high pitched voices. So I think I'm gonna write that um, the horse spider people are creepy running up the cage walls and squeaking. So that would be my second sentence. Uh, the horse spider creatures are really creepy. Climbing up the wall of their cages. All right. Oh, and I was gonna say, and squeaking. All right, S-Q-U-A, sorry about that. S-Q-U-A, squeaking. All right, and lastly, um, another thing that I really liked about the story is that the ending was pretty unexpected. And um, I found myself thinking about it for a long time after I finished the story. And that's how I know a really good story is when I continue to think about it even after I'm done. So I'm gonna add my last sentence. The ending is unexpected. Period. I found myself thinking about the story for a long time afterwards. And that should about do it. So let's go back and read through this paragraph that we would add to the summary. I recommend this story because the author creates a world of the future that seems really real. 
the horse spider creatures are really creepy climbing up the wall of their cages and squeaking. The ending is unexpected. I found myself thinking about the story for a long time afterwards. And there you have it, just a very clear, simple review to add on to the summary. And now for our last part of the lesson, and for many of you, it might be the best part, IDR, Individualized Daily Reading. So today as you're doing your reading, I want you to be stopping periodically and thinking about the important ideas in your book. And after you're done reading for about 30 minutes or so, or longer if you want, um, I want you to tell a summary of the text that you read today, just, just a few sentences, and then please let that person also know whether you would recommend this book to someone else and why. So in fact, you're just doing a verbal summary and review. The book I'm reading this week is The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise by Dan Gemeinhart. I started this a couple days ago and I'm really enjoying it even though I'm only a few chapters in. So I want to model for you a way the way you can uh, do a summary and a review. So imagine that I've just completed my uh, 30 minutes of IDR and I'm going to tell someone about it, okay? And that someone is you, all right? So one thing I do when I'm reading that I teach my students to do is often use sticky notes to write down your thoughts. And that helps me really comprehend the te text and think about it more deeply. So I just wrote down some things that were happening and, and, and um, my thinking about the bigger important ideas. You could also use sticky notes to write down um, a question you have about the storyline or something new that you learn about a character or a prediction for what's gonna happen next. But it really helps you um, think much more deeply about the reading you're doing. So you might wanna try it. You could also use index cards. You could use any kind of paper, really. The sticky notes are nice because then I leave them in there as I read the story. And it's really nice for me to go back and see how my thinking has changed throughout the story or how certain questions may have answered or um, if my predictions came true. All right, so in the portion of that I read yesterday, um, Coyote is the main character and she is a girl who lives on a school bus with her dad and they're crisscrossing across the country. And she um, goes into a convenience store while her dad is getting some gas. And when she comes out, there's a couple of boys that are giving away uh, kittens and they have these kittens in a box and they ask her if she wants one. And of course she does and she picks out the one she wants but she's really worried and doesn't think her dad will let her have the kitten so she devises a plan to have the boys help her sneak the kitten onto the bus so she keeps the kitten hidden and when it was time for bed um, she had the kitten sleeping next to her in her section of the bus which was the very back part and had a curtain across it so the kitten kitten could remain hidden well, the next morning when she woke up, guess what? The kitten was no longer next to her and wasn't in her section of the bus. So she really quietly tiptoeing goes through the bus trying to find the kitten without waking up her dad. And then she does find the kitten and the kitten is curled up on her dad's chest, um, right um, cuddled up to his neck. And she's like, uh-oh, what am I gonna do now? So, I'm thinking um, that the important thing about this part of the story is that the kitten represents um, companionship and love for Coyote. We had learned in a story that she had told her dad earlier, a made up story about a girl who missed her family and had no friends and was very lonely. And I think when Coyote was telling the story about this girl, that the girl was really herself. And um, I, in regards to recommending this book, I would wholeheartedly recommend this book to all my fifth grade students and even my friends. I have lots of friends that still, we love to read kids books. And uh, because I love the main character, Coyote, already after just a few chapters, she's really spunky. I can tell she's clever. Uh, I can tell that she's very caring and compassionate and, um, She's a good storyteller and I just really like her and I can't wait to see what adventures are gonna happen 
um, with her for the rest of the story. All right, it's been great to be with you for these last three lessons. I hope you've enjoyed them. And um, I just wanna wish you happy reading. Get started, everyone. Have a great day.